morning. Good morning, good morning. It's very quiet. Morning, do quiet. Being in the southeast corner of the country. Let me shut the window. With the wind, uh, the prevailing wind, and the, therefore the weather being from the southwest. Uh, sorry about this creek, I've got the seat down in the back. I had to. Uh, actually, I took the um, trimmer into the into work the other day, and because uh, we're living a uh, like um, work in an industrial unit, and it's got a little bit of ground around it, so I uh, trimmed it a bit and uh, cut a few trees down and stuff with the permission of the practice manageress and uh, we did it on a like a pro bono basis just uh, uh, that is annoying isn't it on a pro bono basis um, and I think that's always good you know to put a little bit back in you know just make yourself known as uh, chance of getting past anything. God knows what he's doing. Yeah, so we started off the week with a bit of pro bono work, so we don't mind that. And also, uh, I think it's good to do a bit in the surgery as well, you know. We do two types of pro bono work. One where we take a case that's, uh, you know, quite an extensive case. I wouldn't say, like, complicated. So it might be, like, uh, upper and lower partial denture with lots of uh, IR extractions. Uh, and then we do that, you know, for someone perhaps who's in their 20s and has got sort of, uh, you know, is sort of people who smile with their hand in front of their face, you know, because they've got black teeth. So we do that. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, and then the other sort of pro bono stuff is the... Um, Very simple, uh, you know, someone comes in with a broken front tooth and let's say you're going to, uh, I don't know, extract the tooth and put it on a denture, but you're not, not going to be able to do it for three weeks. So, so what we do is get a, do you know those three idiots I've had come the other way so far? All, all uh, you know, not paying any attention and or trying to work out what they would do if something came the other way other than uh, expect you to get out of their way so we so we do like a few uh, pro bono fillings and uh, actually we do quite a lot of stuff that we don't charge for I must say like for example if we do a root filling we very rarely charge for the actual filling if it's just an access cavity, then we wouldn't charge uh, to, to fill up the access cavity. Look, number four. Unbelievable. There's a brick in the road. CCTV is you can Google these firms like that's Jackson's fencing right and send them the clip and say like this is your guy driving without due care and attention bowling past a pair of uh, cyclists at 30 40 miles an hour just because he's you know going down a tiny country lane and uh, and the next time you catch him doing anything like that, you'll just send the clip straight to the police. 
and uh, generally you do because they uh, they care about their brand. They write back a letter saying they they'll have a word, you know, and thanks for sending it in. Uh, I think the uh, fleet managers want to know if they've got drivers who are driving like lunatics. And let's face it, I mean it's it's the rule rather than the exception, isn't it? Most uh, most commercial drivers do treat commercial driving as an excuse to, you know, they're driving on, it's like their their business personality is a, a maniac. They're not using their brake pads, they're not using their petrol, they're not wearing out their vehicles and so why not thrash it? Anyway... So yeah, so we don't charge for uh, fillings in uh, access cavities and we don't charge for uh, x-rays ever. Uh, we try and uh, have a policy of inclusive charging, which basically means if someone needs the treatment, then we quote them a fee for the, for the whole thing. That includes everything. I don't want to say to them, well, you need a roof filling, but because we're going to drill a hole in your ground, you're going to need to have that filled up, and so we're going to charge you another 80 quid for filling that up. And of course you'll need two x-rays. Because the trouble is, the minute, the minute you separate anything out of a, uh, an inclusive fee, you give the patient the right to say, well, I'll save money and not have that done. And so you can say, well, uh, you know, we're going to charge you extra for your x-rays, and they say, well, I won't have the x-rays. So then you say, well, you, you've got to have the x-rays. The x-rays are part of the root filling. The General Dental Council is going to take a very dim view if I don't take the x-rays. And then the patient will say, well, what are you going to do, you know? Basically, are you going to, are you going to give me the choice to opt out the x-rays? Am I going to be able to exercise my right to uh, under informed consent to withdraw? from any treatment that I don't want or are you going to insist that I have treatment against my will in which case then the answer has to be all right don't have the effing x-ray you know so then you're then you're trying to then you've got another difficult decision which is are you are you going to go ahead with the root filling without the x-rays and what happens is if it goes wrong you know what happens if you fill it too far what happens if your root filling goes through the tip of the root and into the nerve and the patient ends up with a paralysed jaw? What, you know, because you, you didn't take an x-ray and find out that the root's got a, a right angle bend on it halfway down. It's, uh, So what we do is we just quote, we, we quote a fully inclusive price and we tell them that it includes x-rays and then we never, nobody ever has a squeak. What else? Oh yeah, the policy of uh, squeak, get it, squeak. Our uh, charge in advance policy is still still causing a few little ripples in the pond. We uh, very occasionally get a patient who says, no, I've got this invoice through. Uh, you know, I've been coming here for five years. I've never missed an appointment. You know that I wouldn't miss an appointment. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, I don't intend to pay your invoice. I shall do what I've always done, um, which is pay on the day. Um, now, let's get the wing on open. Ah, matey, coming past, he wants to come past, this is fair enough. So, you know, it's very tempted to say, oh yes, I, yeah, of course I know you, you're, you're all right, you'll be, we know you'll be fine, no offence intended, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a bit more difficult to write the letter that you need to write, which goes along the lines of, um, Thank you for asking for more information about our new invoicing policy. Uh, 
since we've introduced it, it has cut down dramatically on appointments uh, failed uh, and time wasted because the patients uh, simply forgot they had an appointment or uh, uh, found a, an NHS dentist and decided not to tell us or uh, and then and then because they're, they're going to say oh, well that doesn't apply to me that doesn't apply to me and then then the one which does always does apply to people which is that uh, you know we're, we're unable to come on the day due to circumstances beyond their control right and that could be their circumstances beyond their control could be that they just wanted to stay in bed uh, that they woke up and realized they got a dental appointment and decided that they they were going to skip that day in their life uh, or the car broke down all the usual stuff you know my work has got been called into work etc i've had to uh re rejig my appointments because someone you know that the old surveyor has said that's the only day you can come and look around my house uh, whatever well, my, my skype meeting's been the time has been changed all that stuff and i put in brackets you know which may well which may well be totally beyond your control but you know, you're unable to attend for circumstances beyond your control. And so then they can't write back and say, well, that, that wouldn't apply to me because who can say that circumstances beyond their control, would, you know, that they've got control of those circumstances. So, and also, I mean, the, when I started thinking about it, there are other benefits as well. Like for example, uh, the receptionist doesn't have to sit there watching them type their numbers in the in the card machine and trying to work out what their charge is she works out what the charge is she uh, emails the invoice through and then they pay it whenever and you know most of the time they pay it uh, uh, you know like seven o'clock in the evening or nine o'clock in the evening or eight o'clock in the morning or something you know perhaps the times when it's convenient for them where where the surgery isn't even open a lot of people do their admin and work out how much money they've got and pay their bills uh, out of hours, out of work hours. And the other benefit, of course, is that uh, when the patient comes in, they have the filling. And in our case, uh, the we've got two entrances to the practice. We've got the what I'll call the internal entrance, which is the shared space the uh, sort of common waiting room etc and then that goes through reception to the desk uh, through, through the reception to the surgery but since covid we've started doing it the other way around which is they come in through the back door and straight into the surgery and so uh, if they've already paid they have the filling and then they go straight out of the back door see so the receptionist then they don't have to go into reception at all and uh, they don't have to touch the card machine or the desk or sit in the chair on the desk. And so as a result, we don't have to do a lot of wiping down the sterilizing of the card machine and stuff like that. So it's got indirect benefits. So you put all those in the letter as well, you know. You've got the indirect benefit of uh, cutting down on reception time and visits and uh, shared use of the, co the common card machine. Not to mention cash, I mean, nobody pays in cash. So, uh, what are they doing? Uh, so, we'll see. I mean, now, now you might say, well, I suppose he calls your bluff and says, well, I'm coming in. <laughs> hey, fuck your invoice. I'm coming in anyway. Then they won't because what will happen is their, their appointment will get cancelled. So supposing it's a Thursday appointment, it'll get cancelled at 5pm on Tuesday if they haven't paid. Or oh, certainly by 9am on Wednesday. They'll just get an email to say their appointment's been cancelled and that they're welcome to rebook. And you know, for them, then that's that's basically an ultimatum, isn't it? There's no point in them. There's no point in them sort of on standing on principle, refusing to pay the invoice, only have to the appointment continually rescheduled because they won't pay. Which, after all, is the the whole purpose of the system. 
is to identify the people who who won't pay on the off chance that they don't turn up. These people, what they're doing is they're retaining the right to turn up and then not pay if they decide not to turn up. That's the right that they're giving up. They know that they're giving up and that's why there's sometimes a bit of resistance. You know, what we do is we say to them, okay, we're gonna get your money off you before you come, therefore your ability to simply not turn up uh, or cancel a short notice and not pay is, has been withdrawn. You will be charged if you cancel a short notice. Well done, GD66 ZSP. You have gained 10 feet on me. You're 10 feet ahead. I'm gutted. And the other thing which I'll give you an update on is our uh, uh, wand knockoff. You wanna go? You wanna go? Come on. Sitting there looking at the bloody squirrels in the trees. So it cost us three grand. I think, I mean, we, it's making enough of a splash in the surgery to justify the expenditure, I think. It's like £3,000 worth of marketing, I think, probably, because um, it's very new, all the patients are interested in it. Uh, it's, uh, it does improve the patient experience in that it is uh, easy to uh, can I put it we don't it's not like that we suggest to the patient that it's less painful but what we always ask them you know, was that less painful you don't say and there is a certain amount of suggestion there because we don't say was that any better or worse than last time which if I was a scientist I would have to have like an unbiased question we say was that you know was how was that was that easy you know was that easy was that in the same way as you say with a child there you know that was easy wasn't it even if it wasn't easy you say there we are that was easy wasn't it because afterwards they remember the fact that it was easy they say oh yeah i remember it being easy but they don't remember it um so so and but i think genuinely a lot of the patients do think that it's uh uh, not totally painless, but um, certainly extremely tolerable. You know, no no problem at all, really, even for a patient who's nervous. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a couple of problems. The one is that uh, you have to vent every syringe, which means you know you squirt a load of the anaesthetic all over the place before you, you're able to use it and then secondly you have to uh, it, it won't use up the whole cartridge it stops with a good 20% of the local anaesthetic still in there um, also there's no aspiration so uh, and there is a facility to give a, an ID block there uh, which is basically just uh, in terms of the, you know, the, 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 the speed of the solution is sort of more consistent with an ID block than it would be, say, for an interligmental. Um, so you don't you don't get the aspiration. Um, what else? Yeah. So so uh, and also, if you change the cartridge, uh, then you have to. Um, sort of prime the second cartridge and that means that you get a load of uh, anaesthetic squirting out through a needle that by that point has already been inside the patient and so you have to you know you can't squirt that on the floor sort of thing that uh, so you get a load of infected uh, or potentially infected uh, local anaesthetic coming out of the needle if you change the cartridge uh, but the the fact that it beeps a lot is good because uh, you know it, it makes a big it announces itself really well, you know. <laughs> you, 
patient, you know, you, you say to the patient, oh, they've got this new computerized uh, injection system and it's going to beep a lot, and it does, it beeps a lot. But that's not so bad because you want to, you want, you know, it's drawing attention to itself, which is, which is good. The sales rep said, uh, you know, you might, that beep, beep, you might get annoyed and you might want to turn that off. And I'm like, no, I, actually, I like it. Oh, yeah. I wish it was a klaxon. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, I'm at work now. I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.